It is as if every time we touch a different aspect, I keep on saying, oh, this is very important. We're going to use it at some point of time. And I just have to say it again, titrations of acids and bases. Uh, this is very key. Um, we are going to use this time after time. Uh, I think you're even going to do a practical on this, you know, acid and base uh, reactions. Or you should do it at some point of time in your high school years, either grade 11 or 12. But yeah, it's very rare that you're going to finish high school without doing tritations. Yeah, this is uh, very important. So let's take a look and see what is really happening here. Uh, the neutralization reaction between an acid and a base can be very useful, as we have talked about uh, previously. If an acid of right if an acidic solution of known concentration is added to a basic solution of unknown concentration until the solution is ex exactly neutralized it is possible to calculate the exact concentration of the unknown solution right so that is what titration is all about we are using the concentration and volume of a known substance to calculate the concentration and volume of the unknown right titration is a technique where a solution of known concentration is used to determine the concentration of an unknown solution this process involves the gradual neutralization reaction of an acid by a base of of a base by an acid right so if you're given an acid uh, with known properties, you can find the properties of an unknown base. And then if you're given the properties of a base, then you can find the properties of an acid that are unknown at that point using this reaction. Right. Tritration is a method used to determine the concentration of a known substance using another standard solution. So what is a standard solution? A standard solution is a solution of known concentration. Okay. The titration of an acid in a core solution with a base is illustrated in the series of photographs below. Right. The titration of an acid in a core solution with a base. Okay. So let's take a look at this. It is a titration of an acid with a base. Okay. So here in our beaker, we have our acid. Right. And then here in our burette, we have our base. Right. So we don't know the properties of this acid, right? But we know the properties of a base. So what are we going to do? We keep pouring a bit of base in our acid. Just a bit, just a bit, right? We have an indicator here in our acid. We have put an indicator inside it. And then when the color of the indicator changes, well, different indicators change color when the reaction has reached an equivalence point. So when the color of the indicator changes, we know that we have stoichiometrically equal number of moles of acid and a base. We know that neutralization has occurred. So because we know the amount of acid that we have poured in, we can then determine the amount of acid that should have been in the beaker to begin with. That is what titration helps us with, right? So we have an, an acid of unknown properties and we keep pouring a small amount of base until the indicator changes color. When the indicators changes color, we know that neutralization has been reached. We are at the end of our reaction now. And using that information we have, with regards to the base, we can then determine the properties of an acid. So this is essentially what titration is all about. But which indicator do we use and when do we use it? Because we have a couple of indicators. Let's talk about that. An indicator is used to determine the end point of neutralization. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. We have three indicators. Methyl orange, bromothymol blue, and phenol Talene. All right, those are our three indicators. So if you're expecting your end point, the end point of neutralization to be reached when the pH is between 3 and 4.4, then you use methyl orange. And then if you expect your reaction, uh, the point of neutralization to be reached when the pH is around 7, you use bromothymol blue and then if you expect your ph to be around 8 around 10 
when the point of neutralization has been reached then you use phenol taline so how do you know that the ph at which the end point of the neutralization is going to be reached is going to be around three and you use methyl orange around seven and you use promethymol bloom around eight and then you use phenol taline how do you know all that if we have a strong base and a strong acid then we would expect the ph to be around seven at the end of our neutralization reaction in this case we would then use bromothymol blue and then if we have a weak acid and a strong base you expect the ph to be greater than seven around eight around nine around ten even around eleven and then the suitable indicator in this case would be phenol taline and then if you have a strong acid and a weak base you expect the ph to be less than seven right and then in this case we would use methyl orange so there we go that is this is how you can have an idea of which indicator you need to use based on the strength of the acid and the base you have at hand let's solve some problems